then data control language. So data control language got some, some permissions given to the database objects tables. For example, the Oracle environment uh, has multiple users like user 1, user 2. I am user 1 and there is another user, user 2. So I am user 1 has created some employee table and customer table. On this employee table and customer table, I can assign some permissions to user 2 that a user 2 can use my table to just read only. He cannot uh, insert some data onto that. He cannot delete the data present in the table. He cannot update the data. So likewise, I can restrict only update operations or I can restrict only delete operations on that particular employee table that was created by me for user 2. So giving such a permission comes under DCL, granting some permissions on those database tables, let us say database objects. Likewise, giving permissions can be revoked, can be taken back. So revoke comes under data control language. So this is a small introduction about the various sub-languages that are available in SQL environment. Right. So we will be looking into all these sub-languages then followed by the operators available then functions. So there are inbuilt functions that uh, deal with the uh, characters uh, likewise, numerics likewise, date related. So we will be looking into all those uh, functions. They are pre-built functions which are ready made available in Oracle environment. Then joins, so an important topic where you can pull the data from multiple tables by joining them. Then sub-queries. You can write a query inside another query. Nested queries, we say. Then set operators. So these are some special operators. So all these things we will look under SQL. Then when you come under PLSQL, so we are PLSQL. So the programming language concepts that were added to that SQL. So control structures you look into. Control structures uh, like if condition, if else, the nested if, and so on. And then loops. So basic loop, for loop, then while loop. Likewise, switch case. So all these are control structures actually. So all these are control structures. Yes. So along with control structures, you will be learning about stored programs. Stored programs. Stored programs are nothing but the functions where the programmer can write his own function. A function which would calculate the late payment charges on a customer. So a customer using a, using, is using a credit card and he has made some transactions on a credit card and a bill has been generated on that credit card. Over there, the bill has to be paid by some certain due date. If the due date is crossed and the customer has not paid the amount by the due date, then some late payment charges can be levied on that customer. So calculating those late payment charges. So you can write your own function to calculate these uh, late payment charges. So those are functions we say. Likewise procedures. So these procedures and functions are represent a block of statements which would have all those SQL image and they get executed at once and they have a name so that we can refer to them or we can reuse them. So store, so you mean to say store programs are nothing but functions and procedures. Then packages. So these packages are nothing but the group of sub stored programs. I mean uh, the functions and procedures whatever the programmer is writing. So all uh, those functions and procedures that belong to one particular category would be stored in one particular package. For example, the customer information which is holding by the bank 
So update, uh, updating the customer data related uh, functions and procedures would be stored in a package named like update. Likewise, uh, deleting some unwanted data, so related functions and procedures can be stored in delete package. So package is nothing but a name given to group of functions and procedures that are belonging to one particular category, one particular functionality. So packages then followed by exceptions. So exceptions, uh, nowadays all the advanced programming languages, high-end programming languages are supporting exception handling mechanism in it. So exceptions are nothing but when some abnormalities occur while performing some operations on RDBMS, relational database management system, or the container which holds the data, those exceptions can be handled with the help of exception handling mechanism. And Oracle has that exception handling mechanism with it. Then cursors. So here cursors are nothing but, uh, I told you that uh, the customer was uh, viewing the bank statement. So over there, the data that is being pulled from the database can be stored in a particular memory area in the RDBMS and name that memory area, that name is that but cursor. So cursors are always uh, associated with uh, data retrieval language, that is select statement, selecting the data from that tables, mm, then triggers. So triggers are nothing but some events that would perform while some operations going on the table. For example, when a new customer data is being inserted, then we can write a trigger that would fire when some violation would happen. For example, uh, the customer information is being provided. Customer age should be uh, greater than 18 for sure. So this is the rule. Now, while the customer data is being entered, for suppose, if the customer info age is less than 18, then the customer information cannot be inserted into the database. A trigger would fire when the age, that is age, when you give date of birth, and it calculates the age as per the current date, and if that age is less than 18 years, then automatically a message would be, pop uh, will be displayed saying that uh, this, this particular customer information cannot be inserted into application because the customer is not satisfying the age criteria. So that is an event can be fired. Those events are nothing but triggers. Then PLSQL objects. So PLSQL objects. In C programming you might have seen the arrays. Uh, that is group of elements given a name and we can process those group of elements by using those arrays. If you have seen Java, it has collection framework, so collection, so collection of items, collection of objects. So here the PLS objects also have those arrays, the types of arrays, fixed arrays, dynamic arrays and so on. So we will be exploring all those PLS objects in PLSQL environment. So here the SQL whatever we are learning is ANSI SQL. That is American National Standard Institute has proposed some standard rules and we are going through that ANSI SQL. As we are learning the ANSI SQL, I told you that once you are comfortable with Oracle the other databases like DB2, MySQL, Sybase, Ingress, SQL Server, you can understand them easily because it has the same RDBMS concepts and they have the same SQL in communicating to their containers. So SQL and that SQL that is ANSI standard SQL. That's why ANSI standard is popular because all these databases are using ANSI standard SQL and here uh, once you are comfortable with the syntax uh, with uh, SQL in Oracle environment, uh, with the little changes, you can figure out uh, the syntaxes of DB2, uh, MySQL, and so on. Almost 80% of the syntaxes will be same. 
there will be a minimum, I mean there will be minimal changes where you can easily understand because once you are comfortable with Oracle, you can easily figure out what this DB2 or MySQL is talking about that particular thing which is available in Oracle MR. You can just correlate, that. you can simulate that. So in my classes, I will be highlighting certain things which are similar to MySQL environment. MySQL is an open source product which is uh, abundantly used. So here, I will be comparing with MySQL uh, wherever it is possible. So that you can understand the things that are present in other databases also, which are similar to Oracle. So that's about uh, the things which we see under Oracle, that is SQL, PLSQL, the contents, and a brief introduction to Oracle, and here are the various examples for Oracle, I mean to say RDBMS, and when we get into Oracle, there are versions of Oracle. So right from Oracle, six version it is popular. Later on, Oracle 7 version released with added features. Then later on Oracle 8x, sorry, 8x, 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 actually indicates minor version, maybe 8.1, 8.2, 8.3 like this. Likewise 8i, then 9i, so all these are uh, Oracle versions. So 9i was popular during those days, where 9i supported internet, Java, and many other features. Later on, Oracle 10G came into picture. V stands for grid computing. Likewise, 11G. So we are using 11G. 11G. Uh, these are complete relational database management system. So these are the various versions of Oracle. And I will show you uh, Oracle environment here and I will show you the data present in one particular table uh, when you install Oracle on your machine. You can see our click on start menu and you can see Oracle database 11 G express edition and in this get start tab, so click on get start. A browser is open and it will show the home page of Oracle environment. As you can see, Mozilla is being open with the home page to Oracle. Yes, you can see home page. And here you can see the various things, Oracle, database, Express Edition, 11.2 release. So 11 is the major version, 2 is the minor release. And here you can see the various tabs here. So for now, we will be looking into this application express. I'm clicking on application express. So there will be a super user for Oracle environment. You have to log in with that super user account. The super user name is system. And I'm providing the password, which I use during installation process. All right. You can see the user system is logged in. Yes, here. User system is logged in. Now I have my own account, so I am going to click on this. I already have an account. So I am logging with my own account. So there is user 4 account. So provide the password for that. So this I will show you how to create the user and password in our upcoming sessions. Yes. You can see here user 4 is logged in. User 4. And SQL workshop, SQL workshop, team development, administration, and so on. We will be looking into this SQL workshop. So we are programmers, application developers. So we'll be concentrating on SQL, PL, SQL tools, that is application related things. And you can see here SQL commands and SQL scripts. So all those SQL related stuff uh, you are going to do under this SQL. And the PLSQL related stuff you are going to do under this SQL scripts. So let me take you into SQL commands. Yes. This is the editor where you are going to write those uh, sub languages, queries. 
So here you can see, I am going to pull data from one particular employee table and show you. So here I am going to write a simple statement, select star from EMP. Every statement is terminated by semicolon in Oracle environment. Like C programming, Java programming language, every statement is terminated by semicolon. Yes, you can see select star from EMP. Yes, run. There is a run button where you can click it and it displays the data present in that employee table. So look here, look at the query. Select. I am going to select what? Star. Star represents all the columns of that employee. You can see here I am highlighting the columns here. The employee number, employee name, job, manager number, hire rate, salary, commission, department number. So all columns can be represented by star. Okay. Select all columns from where employee table. So this is the employee table EMP. And you can see data present in that employee table. All this data. And it is showing 10 rows returned from so and so table mean so and so seconds. And here it is for now displaying 10 rows. You can control the filter by changing the rows here. Yes, I choose 30. Look here there is a filter and re-execute this query. Select the query and click on run button. And you can see here 14 rows now. So there are 14 employee information in the employee table. All those 14 employee information can be seen here. So employee number, employee name, so Blake, Clark, Jones, Ward, Allen, Smith, all these are employees. And their job, so their job, yes, their job, that is manager, analyst, clerk, salesman, so these are the various jobs. And the manager, manager is nothing but the superior of that particular employee. So superior uh, employee IDs these are. Then hire date. So when this particular employee was hired into the organization. And the salary of that employee, you can see the salary. Then if any commission is applicable to that, then commission. And you can see some commissions are blank and some, some, some commissions have some values. It means these customers, I mean to say these employees don't have commission. And they belong to some departments. So maybe department number 10, 20, 30, these are department IDs. So all these is the employee information that is present in the employee table. And I just pulled out by using a single statement, a simple statement that is languages like Java and C Sharp, .NET, all those languages. Those languages can also be used to pull the data present in this employee table from this Oracle environment. So for example, if I take Java. I just want to use Java programming language to pull the data present in the employee table and display a report here. So all this employee information. Then Java needs a menu of 200 to 300 lines or sometimes it may be ranging to 500 lines also to design a good look and feel for the report that are employee information. So around 200 to 500 lines are necessary to display this employee information on Java console or Java web pages. So here you can see 200 to 500 lines of code you need for Java programming language. Whereas with SQL, it is just a simple statement and it's a single statement. So SQL is a single statement results given by that statement, the same results can be achieved by using other programming languages with uh, hundreds of thousands of lines of code. You can just imagine how simple and how advanced is this SQL. So SQL's single statement is equivalent to some hundreds and thousands of lines in Java programming language or some other programming language. That is why this SQL is very popular and it is very widely used. It is highly secure. All right. Uh, this is a small introduction towards uh, Oracle environment.